got a wee party of cows following me this morning. They're always very eager to get in amongst their food, so. They're just getting a wee bit barley and potatoes in the morning at the moment until the frost all disappears. Been frosty for about two weeks in the mornings, so once that kind of clears, the grass will be able to grow a lot more and they'll be fine just mowing down the grass. Wood chip boiler is obviously going at full tilt this morning because it's so cold. Just in the chemical store at the moment, so we keep our fungicides, pesticides, herbicides all in here and we have to, by law, keep them in a banded, sealed unit. I'm just getting this, which is a chemical for spraying the walls of the grain store to eliminate any bugs. So the wheat that was contaminated a few weeks ago, I'm just going to spray the shed walls now and that'll completely start the shed afresh. This is the front of the farm shop here. I've just been putting out some logs. This is the table I put up the other day. So this was the old workbench for us in the workshop and a vice clamped to it and put a drill on it but now it's a plant prep table looks quite good the girls use it make up arrangements of flowers and plants and all that jazz we're just getting all the veg and the plants all sorted out this morning the plants all go inside um, Plants have to go inside because it's been frosty, it's been kind of down to minus three, minus four the last few nights. The plants go inside, they don't really like the frost, so nice and warm inside, keeps them healthy. And then the girls all put them out in the morning again, and the veg as well. The veg is taken away from the shop, put in chills for the night, keep it fresh. Yesterday's video, what was this? It's a flask, and I am a tea drinker. Or soup, you can put soup in it. Question of the day, what is this? Plugs into a socket, it's got a wee antenna, and it's got a screen on that side. It's quite a small thing. Also, if you're enjoying the videos, just go ahead just now and click like down there and subscribe down there. It helps the videos do better. So drill there heading out, the last wee bit, probably only five acres to do, and that's all the spring sowing finished. Meat delivery for the butchery, that's the where we take our cattle, John Scott. Just spraying these walls, we're halfway done. Got the knapsack on my back. You pull this lever, it pressurizes it, and you spray out the nozzle. Here's the new piece of kit arriving. Oh, oh yeah. Imagine that, but with a blue tractor on the front. Much better. That's it. Wow. Looks good. Stuart trailer. That's one of our number plates. GX18 23S. So this is a new trailer. It's a GX18 23S. 18 ton capacity. Twin axle. It's got a sprung drawbar. So the drawbar pivots back there and there's got two springs here that just means when it's getting towed by the tractor and um, the tractor is not bouncing up and down when this goes over bumps in the road and um, it's got air brakes and hydraulic brakes so old style tractors ha only have hydraulic brakes and newer style have air brakes they're better braking systems so this has got both options and um, these are the oil lines for the these two are for the back door up and down and that is for the the main body up and down set of ladders to get up to the look into the bed of the trailer and um, hooks if you want to tie ropes over it for any reason these are for tying off ropes so the old trailer has a an easy sheet cover on it which is basically a, a cover that you roll all the way over and this is, this is the attachments to tie it off. So they're just there in case you want to add an easy sheet to it. Big flotation tires, BKTs, 560 by 60 with a 22.5 inch radius. This is the back of it. That's sellers, that's where we buy some of our kit. And this is a backdoor hatch. So if you want to unload a wee bit at a time, open that up 
and you can unload out of there. Otherwise, you just open the whole back door. So this is the undercarriage of the trailer. That's the chassis up there with the two axles here. These are leaf springs, so normal cars have coil springs. Um, trailers generally have leaf springs, just a different spring mechanism. And these are all the air lines and oil lines for the air braking and hydraulic braking. Uh, it's got ABS fitted to it as well. There's a big lighting junction box here. So this is if you want to add in lights, you've got extra sockets to add in them and then these are the lights that are on it at the back. And then other than that, that's basically it. It's got a load cell sensing valve as well. So when the trailer's full, it breaks very differently to when it's empty. Um, the feeling should be the same, but the force it generates is much different because you need a lot more braking force when the trailer's full because you're 18 tons heavier. And the last bit is the paint. So the paint work on this is different to our other trailer. It's flexi paint. So if you dent it or ding it, the paint flexes rather than cracks and chips. These trailers are not cheap, but we've been able to justify it now with the amount of ground we're covering. We need to be able to keep up with the combine. So we're able to keep up. We won't have any downtime when the combine's not running. So that's why we've got it. And it should do a good job for us and last a long time. So when I say we need to keep up with the combine, what I mean is we farm a few bits of land which aren't here at home where the grain dryer is. So we need to cart everything all the way back here when it gets cut from the combine. So at the moment, there's a few bits which are far enough away that with the smaller trailer and the other big trailer, we can't keep up. The combine has to stop and wait for us, especially if it's a good thick crop. So buying this allows the weir trailer to get moved on and then we can cart with this. We've got two big trailers running and we can keep up with the amount of grain that's coming off the, off the combine. I could probably talk to you all day about the new trailer, but I need to go and do some work. Otherwise, there'll be no crops in the ground for the trailer to cart. Load of wheat going out today. Just heading along now to the wheat store. I completely forgot he was coming, so I'm going to be late. Perfect timing. He's actually just pulled up right in front of me. I'll chuck the bucket on and load him up. Just loading this guy now, and the sun's in a bit of a nightmare of a spot today. I can't. Uh, I can't see a whole lot when I go around to load them up. Blinded. That's a lorry full now. This is wheat which is quite dense so it doesn't quite fill out the trailer. 29 tonne. It's a way for chicken feed at Noble Foods. The lorry driver let me climb up and get a video. That's him away now. He was nice enough to let me video a few bits. 29 tonne, wheat away, with another two loads that we've sold. They'll be going in the next couple of days as well. I'm just back home now after loading that load of wheat. And because it's such a really, really nice day and sunny, there's loads of cyclists on the road. I'm not bashing cyclists being on the road. I think if it's day like this, you should get on the road with a bike, but you just have to focus so much more when you're driving on a tractor along the road or a forklift, because they go at not much faster than a cyclist, so getting past them can be difficult. When you've got a big long trailer on, it makes it a lot more difficult. And then the spacing of the bikes, that can always cause an issue. It was getting better because tractors moved up to 50K speed, kilometers an hour. But now there's quite a lot of electric bikes and they're going a lot faster now, so we're back to square one. We fellas making a wee bit of pro progress, kicking his legs. Tried to stand him up and took a couple of wee steps, but progress. Metal, metal clanging. You can see fairly clearly where I've 
man up to that line there so just got this section and twice round the outside of the whole field and that's that's the spring crops in complete with the groundwork all that's to be done now on them is just a few runs of fertilizer and a few various different sprays for herbicides pesticides fungicides Kevin's just arrived at the neighbouring field to me, so he's spreading some fert in there. That's a field of wheat. I'm just finishing up the rolling in this field. I've just got one more lap of the field, and then I'll take some fert out to him to keep him topped up. That's the fert spreader there. Kevin's just been once around the field. He does the outside the field first, and then he'll go up and down and finish the strips. Lulu's needing some food. And finish this field out of here so that's the last of the cereal crop sown in the ground so next step this will be getting sprayed with a herbicide to take out weeds it's quite a good day for Kevin to be spreading fertilizer today a uh, really still day if it's windy the wind can pick up the fertilizer in it you end up with stripes across the field where some of, some of the crops grown a bit higher than the rest of it because it's got most of the fertilizer and other bits are lacking fertilizer. So you have to be wary of the wind when you do that. And you have to be wary of the wind when you're spraying as well. I can take these rollers off my tractor now. Other than a wee patch of sunflowers and grass, I won't need the rollers again until after harvest, when we start sowing for winter crop. So I'll take them off. I'll take some fertilizer up to Kevin and also put a trailer inside. Uh, the new one, just want to keep it inside, in shelter, keep it in better condition if it's undercover.